Today is Saturday evening and on Tuesday I will officially be six weeks out from my radical hysterectomy. Um, I had everything removed, my uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, and cervix. And um, I just wanted to kind of do an update video. I don't have my post-op appointment until Wednesday and I'll do another video at that point, but I expect everything to be just fine. and. Um, and then I'll just kind of move on to this next chapter of my life. But there are a few things that I wanted to, to talk about in this kind of final update video. Because um, like I said, in my last video, it'll just kind of be me saying everything's clear and, you know, stuff like that. I might talk about, like, you're cleared to do more after six weeks. Or, I mean, I guess it's different for other people. But for me, um, I had a keyhole laparoscopic procedure. And that's about as minimally invasive as it gets. So, for me, it's just six weeks. Um, and I'm cleared to, you know, lift again and continue normal life. And so, I might do a video after a few weeks just to let people know, like, how that's going. Once, you know, I'm implementing exercise again. And I'm lifting again. And, um, you know, all those other things that's uncomfortable to mention that you're allowed to do after six weeks. <laughs> Um, so I'll do a, a video just kind of talking about how that's going, you know, getting back to normal life. Um, so, but this is like my last, like, I don't know, post-op update other than, you know, the one that I'll do here in a month or so just to update about what it's like getting back to normal life. Um, so anyway, the first thing that I wanted to, um, I, I really just wanted to reiterate that like, the first two weeks are pretty rough after surgery. Um, in my experience and from being in like support, you know, social media support groups and stuff for other women that have had hysterectomies, um, pretty much every woman <laughs> would agree with me that um, the first bowel movement after surgery is pretty rough. Um, not necessarily that the bowel movement itself is rough, maybe for some though, um, but it's just, so on average, I read that it takes four days to have a bowel movement after the surgery. And I mean, there were some women in my support groups that, I mean, they were going like a week or more and I just can't even imagine. Um, yeah, you know, and it's funny, like when you're going through it, you're like so like the details are so vivid, you know, but like for me, it's actually getting fuzzy. Like I can't even remember. I think it was like day three or four after, but it's such a huge relief, you know, to just finally get to that point. But even once that happens, like for the first week or two, and I mean, I feel like it lingers even longer than that, but especially the first week or two, I feel like the bowels are just kind of resituating inside or something because the bloating and the swelling and just digestive issues kind of persisted for a while for me. And it really did just kind of seem like they were trying to figure out, you know, where they, trying to get situated again, you know? Um, Cause I mean, it's like your bowels were like more or less situated in one spot for like decades. And then all of a sudden you remove organs and there's other space to take up. And anyway, that's my theory. <laughs> but after a few weeks, they finally get to a point where they're situated and the digestive issues go away and the swelling starts subsiding and the bloating and, um, and you kind of forget about it. But while you're in it, like, I feel like that was the most uncomfortable thing for me. It was just like my abdomen just kind of getting figured out all over again. Um, so yeah, I already did my videos you know, kind of updating people along the way. But the one thing that stands out even like six weeks after is that, <laughs> just the digestive issues and everything after surgery. Um, but anyway, the other thing I wanted to mention was hormone replacement therapy. Um, so for me, my doctor told me to start out on half a milligram of estradiol, just a oral pill that you take every day, same time every day. And I listened at first and that's what I was taking and everything seemed fine. And then in one of these support groups that I was in, in one of the threads, I mentioned that I was taking half a milligram of estrogen. And I had so many women telling me like, that's way too little. You are so young. Your body needs more estrogen. I take two milligrams. You should be taking two milligrams or a milligram and a half, and a half or whatever. And it scared me and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting enough estrogen, you know, my health. And so I started taking two milligrams and I started getting really irritable. Um, 
I tried to not let it show on the outside, you know, like decades of a period in PMS kind of prepared me, you know, to be like self-aware and to be like, okay, be rational. These are your hormones. This isn't real. Um, but even my husband said that he could tell that I was just like a little bit more like crabby, you know? And so, um, yeah, I definitely felt that like the first day, like everybody has an off day every now and then, you know? So the first day I didn't really think anything of it. Um, I mean, I just had surgery. I'm allowed to have a crabby day, you know, <laughs> but the second and third days I was just kind of like, I, this is like not normal. I, it was like PMS on steroids and it was the same every day. And so, okay. So historically I struggle with hormonal fluctuations. It's the ups and downs that I really struggle with. So I, I had a feeling that like, maybe this is too much. So I called my doctor and well, I talked to the nurse and she was like, yeah, I talked to the doctor and he was like, that's a little too much for you. Um, she was like, you really should just be on the half a milligram. And then, I mean, if you're having symptoms like hot flashes or night sweats or things like that, then we can, you know, revisit your dosage. But she was like, I, I really think that you'd probably be okay on half a milligram. So I, um, I gradually got back down to half a milligram because I was afraid to do it like all at once because that kind of fluctuation, I was afraid that I would just really struggle. So, um, I did a milligram and a half for a few days and then I did a milligram for a few days and then I did like three quarters of a milligram for a few days. And then now I'm back to half a milligram and I feel so much better. And I could even feel the adjustment as I was going, like I would decrease my dosage and for those few days, I would feel so much better. I wasn't as irritable. I was happier. I was just feeling better. And then, you know, every time I would decrease the dosage again, I would feel that much better. And now that I'm back to the half a milligram, I feel totally back to normal. I don't feel the irritability or any of that. So hopefully this is my new normal and I don't have to mess around with dosages anymore. I know some women, it takes them like six months to a year to get it all straightened out, but I feel like half a milligram of oral estradiol is my happy place. And, um, so hopefully I can just stay there and be good, you know? Um, but speaking of hormones, I have to say that it is amazing to not have PMS every month. Like, I just feel like me. Um, whenever I was doing research before my surgery, I remember reading one woman's blog where she was um, just talking about her experience and she even said that she felt like a zen buddha she was like i'm just so calm i'm not at the mercy of my hormones i don't have the ups and downs and i just remember reading her experience and just being like oh that sounds so nice i would love that <laughs> and um that's my experience i don't i don't have highs and lows i don't feel like i'm at the mercy of my hormones um I feel like me, like I feel like the me that I was before I hit puberty, just like lighthearted and, you know, just stable hormones and um, it's really been great, honestly. Um, not to mention not having a period, so that's really nice. Um, I used to have really heavy periods and, you know, I've, I've told people this before and they're like, how do you do that? But like, I would have to put two extra absorbency like the ultra absorbency tampons in just to make it through the night and even then like if it was a super heavy flow that month even then I would still um have to get up you know before I would actually wake up to switch things out so um very heavy periods and um you know it was hard to sleep when I was on my period because it's like you wake up in the night and you're like I hope I'm not bleeding to death, you know? Um, so I'm so grateful to be done with that. I was also very anemic. Um, even with a daily iron supplement, I was still just barely meeting um, the range for, you know, healthy ferritin levels, um, which ferritin is your iron stores. And so I would always have a pretty decent amount of um, iron circulating in my blood. Um, because you know, you're taking the iron and so it's like, it's in your blood every day if you're taking it every day. But the problem was that my body was not <sighs> adequately absorbing and storing iron. And so my ferritin level was like a 15 and that is like bare minimum. And that's with an iron supplement. So, um, the doctor is going to test my iron levels, my ferritin in particular. Um, so that will be really nice to know and hopefully that's better. He, um, 
when I met with him uh, before and after the surgery, because I had my two week post op, and both times he said that he felt like I'd be able to quit the iron like a month after my surgery. So, but we'll know for sure when I get the test done. But anyway, all these things have been so nice. I have zero regrets. I feel amazing. Um, I have not had a single um, surgical menopause symptom, nothing. I have not had any hot flashes. I have not had any night sweats. I did sweat at night for the first few nights after my surgery, but I think that that was my body um, purging itself of all the fluids and, and things that you're given at the hospital because I did that after all of my C-sections too. And I mean, I'm sure there were hormonal adjustments going on after a C-section. So, you know, I just think it's the body flushing out hormones and fluids and things like that. Um, that's what it felt like anyway. And it was just for like the first few nights. So, um, yeah, I just, I feel really good. I, I sleep great. Um, now that I have my estrogen figured out, I feel great. There's no hormonal fluctuations. Um, I just feel like this is like a brand new me and I am super happy about my decision. I was very, very scared going into it. So that's something that I kind of want to touch on because I know a lot of women are scared. They feel like they're losing their womanhood. They're, they feel like they're not going to be themselves anymore because, you know, they're going to be losing those hormones and they're going to be on hormone therapy. I had all of these same fears. I was afraid to do the surgery because it's such a permanent decision. Once you have you know, these organs removed, you can't put them back in. You know, it's not like a, when you get your tubes tied, you can have that reversed and it's successful a lot of the time, but like there's no reversing a hysterectomy. And so I, I was very apprehensive and that's why it took me a year. I had it scheduled and then I backed out at the last minute and I just researched like crazy for a year. And, um, honestly, like I researched and I felt really good about my decision. I would say that the research more than anything helped me to know that I needed to have it all taken out because I mean, I spent a year researching and from my own personal research, more often than not, women who left their ovaries um, but had their uterus removed, they ended up having to go back in for surgeries because of complications um, or they went into ovarian failure more than half of women who have a hysterectomy within five years go into ovarian failure. And so they end up having to have their ovaries removed anyway, or at the very least going on hormone replacement therapy. And it's like at that, at that point, you know, you should have just had them removed to begin with. Um, but anyway, so research did do that for me. I felt 100% sure that when I had the surgery, it all had to go. Um, and then there's also the risk, like if you leave part of the uter or, or if you leave part of the cervix that you can still get, um, some type of bleeding, like spotting every month, because, um, oftentimes there's, you know, uterine endometrial tissue that's left behind. Um, so there's other things that can happen. It's not just the ovaries, it's the cervix and you can have issues with your fallopian tubes. And anyway, I just knew it all had to go. So Research did that for me, but more than anything, it just felt right. Like the, just the surgery in general. I just got to the point, I had had enough hemorrhagic ovarian cyst ruptures and I had battled my anemia long enough and I dealt with heavy periods long enough and the PMS, like PMS is no fun. And um, I think I talked about this in one of my other videos, but some months it felt more like PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which is like a very heightened version of PMS. Um, and I would just get super depressed and, um, just have really just negative, dark thoughts and feelings, you know? And, um, so I, I went through all of these things for that whole year while I was researching and I was just like, this is, why, why do I need to keep putting myself through this? You know, this is not fun. It's not just one thing. It's like a very multifaceted, <laughs> um, thing for me. So so anyway, um, I just want to put that out there for any woman that's scared. I was terrified and that's why it took me a year <laughs> to get to the point where I was ready to do this. But it has been one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. If we just want to talk about health 
it's probably the best decision for my health that I've ever made in my life, you know? Um, but anyway, you know, if you have your ovaries removed, you know, I, I've been taking estrogen ever since my surgery, so I can't speak to women who don't do hormone replacement therapy. I don't know what that's like, but it, as long as you're able and do the hormone replacement therapy, I feel just like me. If anything, I feel more like me than I've felt in a long time. You know, like, it's like I said, like I just, I feel like the me that I was before I hit puberty and started being at the mercy of my hormones. So don't be afraid of that. You're still gonna be you. You're gonna be like an even better version of you. Like, yeah. And I don't know, um, like health wise, I sleep great, I feel great, I have energy. Um, you have to be patient though, because the first few weeks after surgery, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna have those just really tired days. You're gonna be sore and um, you just kind of have to be patient. By six weeks, you know, depending on what kind of surgery you've had, I don't know, if you, if you, if you have the same as me, by six weeks, you should be feeling great. Um, so don't make any decisions before then about whether or not you should have had your surgery. Give it the full six weeks and then I think that you'll be super happy that you did it. Um, but anyway, I guess that's all I really have to say. It's just, it's been great for me and um, I can't think of anything else specifically to talk about, but um, I'm pretty much back to normal life. I just have to be careful about lifting because I feel so normal that I forget I even had surgery because I don't have any soreness anymore. Every now and then I'll have a little bit of swelling, but I feel like after day 25, that kind of went away. Days five and days 25 were my breakthrough days where I just felt significantly better than I had all the days before. Um, so since I would say around five weeks, that's when the swelling really starts going away. And like the swelling is there for so long that I mean, at least for me, I felt like I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna have a swollen belly for the rest of my life. Like, I'm just gonna look pregnant for like ever. Like, this is just my new life, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm just always gonna be bloated. But something happens like around week five and it just starts going away. Like every, you hit week five and every day after that, the swelling goes down more and more and more and more. And I'm pretty much back to normal now. So you won't be swollen forever and you will feel and look normal again and um, yeah, I will update you guys after I have my appointment on Wednesday and then I'll update, you know, a month or two months after that and just let you know how, I don't know, my new normal has been. So, um, thanks for watching my videos. I make these to help other women because I know when I was, you know, getting close to having my surgery I was just looking for like anybody's experience that they could tell me I just wanted to be prepared I wanted to know what to expect um, I wanted my fears silenced <laughs> you know and I wished that there had been more and so I want to put my story out there and help other women and um, yeah so I hope this helps somebody thank you so much for watching